Here's how to wake up a sleeping ESP32 microcontroller, then send an alert to a PC over Wi-Fi using MQTT when the sensor is activated. This will potentially work with any type of sensor, but in this example I'm using the PEER infrared motion sensor. There are three parts to the video. First we'll upload a sketch to the ESP32 to allow it to work as an MQTT client. Then we'll write some server code in Visual Studio. Finally, we'll test the client server setup. There's a link to my Arduino and Visual Studio source code in the description. There's also links to other videos you might find useful if you want to get peer sensors and MQTT working with the ESP32. I'll also briefly mention that the ESP8266 could use this code with minimal modification. It's a great choice of MQTT client, and it's also possible to set up the ESP8266 as an MQTT server. Now let's dive in and write the code. So I'll do a quick run through of the ESP32 code, and this is in the Arduino IDE. So the source code I'm using is a combination of two example files. So if you go to File, Examples, Wi-Fi, and then Wi-Fi Client Basics. So this is where the basic Wi-Fi networking comes from. The MQTT part of the code is using the pub sub client library. So if you want to use my source code, you'll have to install this library using the library manager. And it's pub sub client by Nick O'Leary. So I'll have a quick run through the ESP32 code. So at the top, we instantiate our libraries. So because we're using Wi-Fi, remember to put your own SSID in here and your password in here. The MQTT server I'll cover later. This is the IP address of your server. Note that you can't use local host unless the ESP32 is actually connected to your machine via a USB cable. If you want to know what IP address your PC is running, then open a command window and type ipconfig and then you will find it there. Also know that sometimes the IP address will change if you've rebooted your PC or the router. Next, we define a variable here for the motion sensor or any other sensor you're connecting to the ESP32. So if you want the sensor to wake up the sleeping ESP32, then it must be a RTC pin. There's quite a lot of these, so you can see this diagram here and this useful diagram I'll link to in the description. So here we have a wake up counter variable and this will increment every time the ESP32 wakes up. This can be quite useful because you can keep a log of how many times it's been woken up. We prefix it with this RTC underscore data underscore ATTR. This is a special prefix for variables and it means it can be stored in memory even when the ESP32 goes to sleep. So next we set up the Wi-Fi. This is pretty standard routine. This I don't think we actually use, actually. I think this is just for receiving messages. This is for connecting to the MQTT server. You might want to change the client ID, especially if you have a number of different sensors connecting. And then we have a standard setup routine for the Arduino IDE. So we set various things here. Remember to set the pin mode of the motion sensor to input. And every time the ESP32 wakes up and the setup routine is run, it will increment the wake up counter variable. Here we just initialize the Wi Fi again and set various initialization settings for the MQTT server. I should also mention that the MQTT server normally runs on port 1883. You might need to open this in your firewall or your PC's firewall to allow the communication to happen. So we'll print out a string when the ESP32 wakes up and this is printed to the serial port so this is quite useful for testing it. The loop is not used in this sketch but note that you have to put a loop in otherwise it won't compile. So the first time the ESP32 is activated and wakes up it will just go back to sleep again. The second time it wakes up it will trigger the alert for the sensor. So triggering the alert will send the message via MQTT. So the message we send will be this message here. It will say sensor 1 activated and then it will send in the wake up counter variable. So you can see how many times it's been activated. 
So we're going to publish a message, which is this message here, and it's going under the topic of security sensors. So you can set multiple topics and they're quite a useful way of sorting the messages once they arrive at the server. So after we send the message, the ESP32 will go back to sleep. The sleep device function handles the sleeping. So we're using this very long function name here, ESP sleep enable ext0 wake up. And the important thing here is we're using ext0. This allows a single sensor to wake up the ESP32. We send in the number of the pin the sensor is connected to and the voltage state that we want the ESP32 to wake up on. In this case this is high, so if high voltage is output then the sensor will wake up. Normally you'll probably want this high. So there is an ext1 function, although it does have different parameters. I'll just briefly mention that one because you need to use ext1 if you want several sensors to potentially wake up the ESP32. So if you have a number of sensors monitoring something, then you'll want to use ext1. Again, it does have different input parameters. Remember that this doesn't actually sleep the ESP32. To do that, you have to call this ESP deep sleep start. So once this function is called, the ESP32 will sleep. So that's pretty much all that we need. And again, you can download this source code in the description. Now we're in Visual Studio and we need to write a server. So I've written this in .NET Core. So this is basically based on the source code of one of the samples from the MQTT net library. So you'll need to install this NuGet package. I don't think we need this one. This is the main one, mqttnet.asp.net core, and it will also install the basic MQTT net library. So for our program, this is just a Windows console application. It basically just starts this method here, and this is in here. So this is the server. I'll have a quick run through. It basically starts up a web server to listen on port 1883. That's the standard MQTT port. So when you can configure the service, you can attach a number of event handlers to the controller. So I've used validate connection. And for this example, the most important one is on client publish async. So this will be called whenever the client, in this case, the ESP32, publishes a message to the server. And there's a few more things for configuring it here. So I'll go up here. I've left validate connection in. I don't really use it in this example, but it's called before on client publish async. It would be a good place potentially to put security checks in or anything else just to ensure that the client is valid when they connect. So on client publish async is the most important method here. And if you put a breakpoint on this event args and see this property, you'll find all sorts of useful things. So, so the topic is really important. This corresponds to the client method here, client.publish. So the first parameter it goes in is topic. So our topic is security sensors. So this string should say security sensors when the ESP32 connects. The second parameter is the actual message. This corresponds to the second parameter of the client.publish method in the ESP32's code. So I've made a process message function and it will send in the arguments of the topic and the message. So let's have a look at it. So I made it as a static class and it has a process message function here. A really important thing if you're writing an MQTT server where there's potentially lots of clients connecting is that you need to really use asynchronous code. You don't want anything in on publish client async to be blocking these threads when the messages are coming in, particularly if you're getting lots of messages, like tens or hundreds of thousands of messages coming in. So remember to await anything and pass it off to a different thread. So that is our code. We should now test it. So the first thing we need to do is to start up the web server. You may or may not get a Windows security warning come up for the firewall, so be sure to allow it to work through the firewall. So we can now see that it's listening. 
So now I'll connect up the ESP32 to the PC via the USB port. It will run without the direct USB connection over it because it will run over Wi-Fi. But it's useful to do this now because then we can see the output from the serial port. So the device is now connected. Incidentally, the sensor is underneath the bowl here. So now we've seen that the ESP32 is waking up. It's just trying to connect to the Wi-Fi. Okay, so the ESP32 initially started up and now it's sleeping. What I'll do is I'll put a breakpoint in the server. So in this method here, so it will stop at the breakpoint when the ESP32 send a message to the server. So now what I'll do is to lift up the bowl and the sensor should activate. Okay, yep, yeah, so the ESP32 has been triggered as motion was detected. It's connecting to the Wi-Fi. Seems a bit slow connecting to the Wi-Fi today for some reason. Okay, right, I seem to have sorted the Wi-Fi, so the ESP32 is now sleeping. I'll wake it up now, see what happens. Okay, so it connected to the Wi-Fi and it sent the message to the server. So the topic is security sensors and the message sensor 1 was activated. So we can now see that the sensor was activated and we'll see the messages in the command window here. Back in the client you'll see it sends a message and then goes back to sleep. You can see this in the serial monitor. I'll try waking it up again. Okay, so it is connecting to the server. I'll do it once more. Okay, so the number increments every time it connects. Just try it one more time. As always, when I'm trying to make a tutorial, the Wi-Fi goes slow and we have problems here. Well, Wi-Fi's let me down, but this is basically all you need to do to set up an MQTT server and send sensor messages to a PC from an ESP32. I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.